For a full decade, Yorkshire Television's 321 caused baffled audiences to bleed profusely out of the ears. A remake of a Spanish show called, of course, Un Dos Tres. It was half quiz, half sketch show, like Davro's sketch pad written by the Zodiac Killer. Its host, Ted Rogers, like all comics of that era, had a veneer of avuncularity draped over the sense you were one wrong word from getting fucking lamped. Leathery complexion, hair which may or may not have been a wig, and a name that's a perfect spoonerism for too much wanking, which he must have been great at, considering his nimble fingers. The thing best remembered from 321 is undoubtedly Ted's special hand signal. Its beauty lay in the giddy thrill of being but one false move from flicking the V's and flipping the bird, hence why it became such a playground staple. But I'm sad to say, if viewers had had access to decent pausing technology, this would have been television's first big scandal. Its selection of prizes read like a police auction for the seized property of a drug lord, one time giving away a live dog. But contestants' goal is to take home a car, while avoiding the booby prize, Dusty Bin. Dusty was 321's mascot, brand, and wooden spoon, a buck-toothed sentient dustbin in Mickey Mouse gloves and a clown nose. He's a sort of homeless R2-D2, and incredibly for his rinky-dink nature, Dusty cost ten and a half grand to build in 1970s money, though they must have recouped that with merch, even releasing a novelty single sung by Ted. Who's the funny face you see on the screen? I'll tell you all about him, then you'll know who I mean. Round and jolly and made out of tin. We all call him Dusty Bin. When the kids come out of school, Dusty Bin starts playing the fool. Setting each week around a theme, 321 was ripe for festive episodes, like on Halloween, where a fake Savile introduced Dave Lee Travis and DJ and rapper Mike Reed, dressed as a werewolf and vampire. Dwight Schrute turned up once too. I'm an assistant to the regional manager. With... Let's look at a couple of Christmas editions, starting with 1980. This is the television era when every contestant, every audience member, either looked like a serial killer or the family member who turned a blind eye. 321's got some roster, with surprise guests, a repertory cast of comedians for the world's worst sketches, and Ted's crew of hostesses. I'm Fiona, I'm Alison, and I'm Libby. Ladies and gentlemen, no edition of 321 will be complete, of course, without everyone's favourite Christmas cracker and our cuddly container, Karen Palmer with Dusty Ben. <laughs> Here we are, Karen. Look at the gorgeous vintage decorations. Proper grandma's living room vibe. Now, our first couple tonight, we've got Yvette and Peter. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Ted's like some old king with a thousand wives. The hostess is doing stuff he could easily do himself. All right, let's have your questions, and it's Alison Temple Savage with a question. Happy Christmas. 321's trademark was its notoriously nonsensical clues, with Ted's explanations coming off like 60s Batman solving a letter from the Riddler. But Ted himself speaks like he's sending a coded warning to Commissioner Gordon bedazzling us with wild alliteration and rhyme. <laughs> Can you imagine these two going out on a Navy mission? That'd be good. Mark Parker embarked on an ark for Sark in the dark with a rim rider on a rotor and he had to reroute it. That would be good, huh? 
I bet you're getting inebriated in Inverness, <laughs> sloshed in Solliho, Blotto in Bolton, legless in Little Hampton. Even its opening quiz round is overly complicated, like this from a Halloween special. We want fruit that is frequent, that you, sorry, we want fruit that you frequently find stored in the kitchen to be used in cooking, both dried fruit and fruit that is preserved by sugar. We do not want the range of crystallized fruits that are eaten uncooked as a sweet meat or tinned fruit, but dried and preserved fruit used in cookery. Okay? So dried fruit and fruit preserved by sugar. Let's start with prunes. For Christmas, it's all about carols and pantos. Now, the one we let you have to start with is Good King Wenceslas. So we start you with that one. That one, Good King Wenceslas. Right. Though Ted's banter makes it worthwhile. Ah. Now, Jean, you're a domestic engineer. That's right. That's a sneaky word for housewife, isn't it? <laughs> Plus the countdown music, which sounds like it's made by little computer dwarves in a mine. Baby bear. Don't know. Daisy the cow. Don't know. A crocodile. Don't know. To my chief, um, your chief, yes, who I work with, he's got a ferret called um, Fred, and I said I'd say hello to him. He's got a ferret called Fred, we'll say hello to Fred the ferret. Hello, Fred. There we are. Contestants are whittled down after the first round, with losers getting a commemorative dusty. All the best. Good luck. Take care. Right. Nice Two couples to play the elimination game just after the break. See you on three, two, one, then. Don't go far away. Oh, there's one. Let's do a quick check. Four, nothing, nothing. Come on, Ted. Next, the men have got a minute to dress up as panto dames. And if you thought the quiz round music was great. Off we go. Well, Ted, they scored six. They got a six. Well done. And don't forget the photo frame. Ladies and gentlemen, will you say goodbye? Thank you, Jean. Good luck. Once that's out of the way, it's down to 321's Meet, the most appalling comedy sketches ever broadcast. But their quality of celebrity guest was second to none. I mean. Terrific! I hope he behaves himself in this panto. Wait, wait, hey, hey. Oh, wait, hey, hey. Oh, I fucking love telling this story. Wait, hey, hey. What's the matter now, darling? Wendy, darling, she is not. A right little darling, she is. Now, up it! Frank Butcher's just the start, as the floodgates of light entertainment come crashing open. Cinderella! Oh no, it's my stepsister Nicola! Nicholas Parsons. <laughs> Derek Beatty. What a pair of rat bags! <laughs> Genie of the Lamp, Bill Maynard. You've been asleep 600 years. Oh. And dressed as a Chinaman, Bob Carroll G's. Here's your chance, Spit. Cats! Oh. <laughs> Alice, what, what sort of Christmas you have, Mike? An 18 carat, 100% did, hasn't cost me a tanner. So, each celebrity brings clues in the form of an item and a riddle, relating to one of five prizes and players have to figure out the clues to decide which prizes they'll discard. Ideally the bin and not the car. We know you'll get the needle if you don't reject this one. If you do, you'll reject several which you might have wished you'd won. Mike, have a good Christmas, have some of that. See you later. Ladies. They end up rejecting this, so let's hear Ted's explanation. If you do, you'll reject several. Well, Connected at Christmas, needles, Christmas tree, of course. And that's what you would have rejected. In fact, a Christmas tree. But just take a look at this Christmas tree. <laughs> Ho, 
whole yeah. sledge full of stuff. We've got a portable TV, a radio, a cassette recorder, video game, a silver ingot is here, a hairdryer, beautiful leather goods case, there's 20 old piece, fountain pens. More panto. Oh, Buttons, I wish I had a fairy godmother. Well, if there's any consolation, darling, I've got an uncle we're not too sure of. Funny's my name. Naughty but nice. <laughs> Terrific. More clues. My first is in crib, but not in tree. More guests. What if we kissed beside the sentient dustbin? They also reject the bloomers, so let Ted give the very obvious solution. All the fun of the fair is yours, just simply ask it, could this be a trip to the fair? Could it be a two-week holiday in Blackpool? It's not the laundry basket. Well, what sort of basket is it? Well, you'd certainly have a lot of fun sampling all the fare of this fabulous basket. It's a Christmas hamper. Take a look at this. Magnus Pike, with the body language of a cartoon burglar. Plus a lovely Christmas tin of old oak ham. Good. And here you have the various things like pickles and so on. They really don't do anything. They sort of tickle up the inside and really give you that. I won't go into details in case you wouldn't understand it, but that's really what the whole operation is about. Lovely. We'll see you after the break on 3 2 1. Don't go far away, will you? Just a three again. Lazy swine. You know when you're in bed with the flu? Fever dropping you in and out of the same nightmare. That's three, two, one sketches. I could excuse you anything, darling. And who are you? Are you ready for this, Winkle? Buttons. Oh, the bells, the bells. It's the bells, the bells. What a wally. <laughs> if the riddles aren't enough. They've got to choose between two crackers to find out which holiday they would have won had they not turned it down. One of them is a holiday in San Francisco, and the other one is a day trip to Rochdale. All right, pull it, give it a good pull, that's it, what's inside there? Holiday in Rochdale. Holiday in Rochdale. <laughs> but it's not Christmas without an appearance from the jolly fat man. <laughs> Notorious dead paedophile Cyril Smith. Merry Christmas, everyone. Uh, fancy rejecting a holiday in Rochdale. First class food, you know, potato pie, rice pudding, although today turkey and Christmas pudding and so on. All that you've rejected. And the other stuff. Along with Smashing. Us. There's Thank a present for you anyway. Present. Straight into the evidence locker. Having rejected every other prize, all that's possibly left is the car. Now, if you'd recognise that the fairy godmother as your friend, well, She'd have granted your wish and made your dream come true on the show today. In fact, she's done just that. You've won the latest Ford Escort car! <laughs> what a Christmas day for you then, Carol. Thank you, huh? hey. so much. Thank you. Happy Christmas. A great new year Thank to you, you Mark. <laughs> Take care. Happy Christmas. Good New Year. Good night, everybody. Bye. Well, they've pulled it out of the bag. But what about Ted? Four, two, one. Zero for three. Not banking on frame by frame in 1980, were you? Like many of your peers, Mr. Rogers, it would seem that the past has caught up with you. By 87, we've got an exciting CGI Dusty for the titles. A large computer with an outsized memory, a special hearing system for the deaf, and three TVs with crystal clear colour. What's the worst nickname you can think of? Meet your host, Ted, Uncle Santa Rogers! Thank you! What a lovely lot! What's going on with his hand? He's overdone it with the three two ones. We'll never get a proper one now. It's so heavy. And when you're out in the street walking, I've got to lift it up and put it on my arm like that. And then I've got a bit of dirt in my eye and... <laughs> We got certain contestants tonight playing our game. Now, these are people who come into your homes every week. You know them more than anybody. The bailiffs? I wish. 
<laughs> lovely Snorbits. Have you had a good day, Burn? We've had a lovely day. We had a lovely day. Have you said hello to Uncle no, Ted? No, slobbering Man. away, Ella. Yeah, he gets lovely. it from Ziggy, you know. <laughs> 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 the thing is, I must tell you, <laughs> Bernie Winters and Snorbits. Right, right. have a stop. See you later. Cheers, Bernie. Cheers, lovely. Contestants are celebrity married couples, though Ted's one of those people who thinks the soaps are real. There's Dolly and Matt Skilbeck from Emmerdale Farm. Now, how are things down at the farm? Has Amos sorted out that problem into top field? Linda? Mm -hmm. Bye, darling. See you in a bit. Uh, well, I'm playing for... Um, it's a deaf home. Uh, oh, a deaf home. Uh, it's a home <laughs> for the deaf and disabled. Lovely. It's a quickfire round of general knowledge. Here's one for the ladies here. What is the everyday name for the white flower called Black Hellebore? Who is it? Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra, of course. <laughs> yes! <laughs> old blue eyes, unlike Oliver Reed. He's old red eyes. <laughs> Last time he gave a pint of blood, it had a head on it. No! Oh, shut up! <laughs> Tomlinson's fast fingers sadly see Jack and Vera eliminated. Mm, money go. Right. All the very best, Jack. Right. Thanks a lot. We'll see you in a couple of minutes on 3, 2, 1. Here you go. Money you go. Let's check the tape. 3, 1, 1. I suppose he is using his other hand. The decor was upgraded from grim 70s office party to a Bond villain's Arctic lair. And the first sketch is worse torture than that bit where Hannibal smashes his knackers with a rope. The minute you walked in the joint. Oh. Hello, everybody. Hello. What do you think of my, my teeth? I've, I've had them done with new caps. Caps? Show me. Let me have a look. You should have had bowler hats. I need to cover those. <laughs> Spend a little time with me. There's an extra game for the audience this year, with a prize for identifying mystery Santas. That lady, who? Oh. Felix. Yeah, Felix what, the cat? Yes. Well, let's have a look, is it? Bonnie. He can't get himself, it's no good, <laughs> yes. You get yourself a lovely fashion what, OK? Sharon. Thanks for coming. Happy Christmas. Just a minute, hands are going up, but I've got to give you the clue first. It's the first one with a hand up. Everybody's hands down, please. Hands down. So that gentleman, that gentleman there, no talking, that gentleman. Yes, it is. It's Jan Levy. Lovely. Jan Levy. Thank you, Jan. He's got it. Let's have a quick pipe. The great Dennis Law. Cheers, Dennis. Good night. These sketches seem solely devised to make the viewers kill themselves. Here's Norman Collier and Eli Woods. I can't. Lay eggs. Why not? I have an itch in my hatchbox. <laughs> I haven't been very well. I had, I had yellow jaundice. Really? Yeah. That's how I got in, accidentally got into the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> it was the world's largest canary. <laughs> if there can be such a thing as a highlight on a three-two-one, it's probably Pat Coombs as Tinkerbell. But they call me Tinker for short, cos I've lost me dinger. <laughs> oh! Oh, hello. They're decorating the tree. Oh! This is the moment I dread. It's the dad, you see, with the aerosol snow. I mean, he's not a bit fussy where he squirts. <laughs> oh! Oh! Bullseye! <laughs> oh! 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 <laughs> oh! Oh! Tomlinson wins the tiebreaker and is bloody ecstatic about it. It's, well, it is Des O'Connor, yeah. <laughs> is it? Oh, it is. <laughs> yeah. It is. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Jean, all the very best to you. Thank you. Very happy Christmas, and to you, Sharon. Oh, it's lovely yeah. to see you. We're going to wait for a couple of minutes. We'll see you soon on three, two, one. Mine, here you go. Three and a one. He's yet to stick the landing once. This container can be filled right up to the brink with lots more, perhaps, than you might even think. Oh, I know this. It's an A-team lunchbox on a school trip to Marwell Zoo when the driver refused to pull over for a second time. 
and when you bumped into an old classmate 30 years later, he introduced you to his wife as Pooh Box. The Brookie gang give up a load of toys, which will unfortunately now go straight on a bonfire. Them's the rules. Have fun, kids! No, oh, to be on a bonfire. Hello, boys and girls! <laughs> One, two, three, go! Go! go. <laughs> Got potty or something? <laughs> and now the magic spell. Take Bo Derek's mouth and Farrah Fawcett's choppers. Take Lulu's legs and Dolly Parton's whoppers! Madam, would you mind turning around, bending over and touching your toes? Not lightly, I've been caught like that before. Whoever wrote this thinks that crony is the same as crone. It's a flying broomstick with some old crony aboard. I, I, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you! Three hates to 24. <laughs> Then there's this special loop hearing system that enables the really deaf to hold group meetings and to hear the proceedings. The really deaf. But the royals are actually good at this game, landing the star prize for their charity. The clue object was a chip pan, and in case that case, of course, chips are the main clue, with lots more perhaps than you might even think. Yes, something that does your thinking for you. It's a computer plus three recorders. You've got it. Yeah. <laughs> And folks, as it's Christmas, we decided that all of our great contestants should get what they wanted. Fuck was the point of all that then? Making everyone sit through Bernie Winters. We're, we're out of smashing time here in the studio. We do hope you've enjoyed it at home. I'd like to thank all of our guests, our mystery guests, most of all you for watching. Till we see you next time, happy Christmas. Good night, everybody. Have a good year. <laughs> oh, a double. Not feeling good about either of these. Yeah, whatever. Happy Christmas. Well, happy Christmas to you. Happy Christmas, Fiona. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas, Barbara. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Bye bye, Barbara. Happy Christmas. Not just happy Christmas. Happy Christmas, Dolly. Well, happy Christmas. Come potty or something? <laughs> <laughs>